Hey there everybody, this is Seamus from Zebrium, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Zebrium command line interface. So the command line interface is a really powerful tool. Um, it enables you to get data into Zebrium without having to go through something like a log collector. So if you have files or bundles of files, you can manually upload those. Or if you want to set up a log tail and then stream logs in as they're written to the file, all that's really easy to configure with the tool. Uh, today I'm going to keep things a little bit simple though. I'm just going to upload a couple of files that I downloaded earlier. And well, we're just going to walk through what this process looks like. All right, so let's start things off by taking a look at the documentation page that I'm going to be working from today. Uh, this is just docs.zebrium.com. This is under the log collectors and file upload section. And uh, the first thing I'm going to look at here are the prerequisites. So uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have Perl installed. Uh, the CLI is actually written in Perl. And we also use the Perl JSON module, which does not usually come by default. So if you just have Perl installed uh, and you haven't manually installed the Perl JSON module, there's a good chance you don't have it. So it's good just to make sure that that's actually installed in your system before you uh, do too much with the CLI. Uh, you're also going to want to make sure that you have curl. Uh, we use curl on the back end just for communication. And then these last two, the collector token and the URL, uh, these are actually going to come from Zebrium itself. So I'm going to log into my Zebrium account to get those. And I'm going to go to the hamburger menu up here at the top right. And I'm just going to click on integrations and collectors and file upload. So this has uh, the URL and the authentication token that I need. But if you read this blurb up here at the top, it actually mentions something about a .zerk file. Um, so this is just a simple configuration file that has to live in the home directory. And whenever the CLI tries to run a command, it'll just check to see if that file exists. And if it does, it'll try to grab the credentials that it needs just out of that file. So you don't have to keep typing it in every single time. That's not required, but I strongly recommend it just because I get really tired having to type out URL and, authentic uh, URL and authentication token every single time. At, yeah, I'm not a fan of duplicating my own work. Um, there's one more thing that we're going to have to do while we're here on this page, though. And I'm going to go down to my root cause settings. And this tile up here, the enable historic incident detection, you're going to want to go ahead and hit yes on this. Um, so by default, normally, uh, when we see logs coming into Zebrium, we don't bother looking at logs that are older than four hours old. Uh, normally, if there's some major incident happening, it's not super relevant to something that happened four hours ago. Uh, so we're just going to want to make sure that this is set and the flag is just saying, hey, Zebrium, uh, whenever you see older logs, just go ahead and process those anyway. Don't just throw those out. All right. So let me go back and grab my credentials. I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to go ahead and open a text editor, paste this in, save this. I'm going to save this. This is my home directory. And I'm just going to call this .zerc. Boom. Done. That is the configuration file set up. All right. So the last thing we need is the command line interface itself. And so to download that, I'm just going to go back to the docs page, scroll down here, do installing. This is a publicly accessible GitHub. And I can just clone this or just download this as a zip. As a matter of fact, I've already done so. And the file that I need is here in the bin directory. It's this ZE Perl script. And so if I go to my downloads and my unzipped zip file and my bin, there we go. That's the tool. Now, you don't have to do this, uh, but I strongly recommend just going ahead and copying this over to whatever your bin directory is on your active path. So for me, I just copy this over to slash user slash bin. Uh, that just makes it much easier to use down the road. I can actually access it from everywhere. So if I go ahead and run ZE help, there we go. That is my manual page. Uh, this is the command that we're going to be using up here at the top. So this is just ZE up. Um, ZE up is just upload a file. And these are some of the parameters that you can use. So URL and auth, we don't have to worry about these because we've already set up our Zerk file. And the Zerk file already has these parameters set for us. Uh, file is just a path to whatever you're trying to upload. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, log, this is just a uh, log type. So you can say, hey, uh, these syslog files that I uploaded, these are of type syslog. Pretty simple. 
Uh, host, generally speaking, the machine that's uploading the files is not the same machine that generated the files. So if you want to just have a flag to say, hey, uh, these came from server X, and even though I uploaded them from my workstation, you can just use the host flag to say, hey, these came from machine X. And then service group is a way to keep track of what app actually generated these files. Um, so we call these failure domain boundaries. And this just uh, keeps things, okay, so if you have application A and logs from application A have absolutely nothing to do with logs from application B and vice versa, then you can just assign application A a service group A and application B a service group B. And that way, if you're keeping logs from both in Zebrium, Zebrium won't be trying to draw correlations across these logs that don't have anything to do with each other. So in my case, I actually have a, a couple of different apps that I'm gonna upload logs from today. So I'm gonna use uh, service groups just to track which applications these logs are from. All right, so let's upload some logs. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead, so this is my home directory and I have my Atlassian logs up here. So I'm just gonna upload the syslog.syslog.log file, which is one of the more entertainingly named logs of the day. So this is my command for doing that. This is just ze up. And then my file is just syslog.syslog.log. Uh, my log type is type syslog, if that wasn't obviously apparent. Uh, service group, uh, this is coming from Atlassian, so I'm just call this ATL just to keep that straight. And then my host is just gonna come from my server ATL. So if I run this, hey, we should get, boom, there we go. Confirmation sent successfully. There's other log files here that are gonna be helpful for Zebrium to figure out what's going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and upload those the exact same way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this. So let's upload the Jira. And then for log type, these are from Jira. So I'm just gonna call these Jira. And this host came from uh, Jira server. And uh, yeah, so the important thing is, is that we're keeping the service group the same. So these all came from service group ATL, uh, but we're just saying, hey, these are uh, different types of logs than the syslogs we uploaded earlier. These came from a different machine, uh, but they are related. So they're in the same service group. These all have uh, uh, relationships to the same um, application that we were talking about earlier. And there we go. And then I can just rinse and repeat and I, I can upload all of my log files the exact same way. And then we can check to make sure that these actually made these uh, these actually made their way into Zebrium through looking at the portal. But before we do this, uh, I actually have more logs from other sources. So let me go ahead and go back to my home directory. Let's go to the logs from server two. And I wanna upload these logs too. These are also syslogs. All right, so. What this command is saying is just go ahead and upload this file. The file is syslog.log. The log type is syslog again. And the service group is server02. So server02 has absolutely nothing to do with Atlassian on this group. Uh, so now by specifying a different service group from the Atlassian logs, now Zebrium is not gonna try to make any connections between these two. And then the host is this came from server02, so I'm just gonna say it came from server02. So if I run this, there we go, sent successfully. So that means that both of these sets of logs have made their way into Zebrium and they're gonna get crunched on Zebrium now. And we can actually confirm that by going back to zebrium.com, going to the hamburger menu again, and now I can go down to my ingest history. And there we go. Those logs are in Zebrium being processed now. Now that the logs are uploaded to Zebrium, just sit back, relax, and when a problem is found, Zebrium will create a suggested alert with details of the root cause that it found in the logs.